Today, there is no fancy video editing, there is no fancy audio recording, and there's no script for me. But I want to share with you guys some serious information about alternate picking, some serious tips, and why you are probably not able to stick to your routine and see the results that you really want. And if you're not able to watch through this whole video, this is probably the problem why you are not able to stick to an alternate picking routine. Okay, I'm serious, you guys. So, um... Stick with this video, watch it and apply what you're learning today and you will see serious, serious progress. I promise that to you guys, okay? Because I'm uh, sticking to this routine for some time now and I feel like I have superpowers from time to time. They tend to disappear from one day to the other day, like um, by a ghost hand. But uh, this is part of the process, uh, as they say. So um, thank you for those of you, uh, for those of you guys who are joining me today, um, because the community is growing very very slowly. I have to say though, my English is not very very perfect. I usually script my videos, but I try my best to give you guys the information uh, that you need, and I try not to waste your time. So let's get into it. But uh, first, I want to show you my new guitar. This is the Martin Miller MM1 signature um, from Ibanez. It's very, very uh, beautiful guitar. It sounds amazing and it plays like butter. It's an amazing piece of gear. <laughs> I really love it. You didn't see it because I am. Um, I planned and pre-rolled my videos uh, until January because I'm moving to Berlin and I have to focus on some other things now. But I wanted to make this video for you guys because as I went through my morning practice routine, I thought I have to share this with you, okay? Especially for those of you guys who are serious with alternate picking and who want to really take it to the next level. So it's important and crucial that you listen to this information and you apply it to your practice routine. I'm really excited to talk about it, so let's get into it. You probably watched a ton of videos about alternate picking. You watched uh, Troy Grady, John Petrucci, Paul Gilbert, um, who's there as well, um, Uncle Ben, um, and uh, Michelangelo Bedio, all those guys. Amazing videos, amazing stuff. And let's talk about that stuff and combine all this knowledge to into one superpower package. And um, as I went through an exercise by Al Joseph, that I altered from my purposes, very slightly. It looks like this. Okay? This is the exercise. And the thing with this exercise is that most people would go and start with a metronome at 70 BPM, play it, and gradually increase the speed over time until you're like uh, 244 BPM at triplets. This is a obviously a good start for shredding and playing fast. And there's no, this is okay, this is the okay way to do, because you will definitely learn it. But there are some things that you should consider. Of course, there's a fine line between overanalyzing stuff and being too detailed about things and uh, not applying any of those things. But I think knowing this stuff can really help to improve it when you are aware of what you do. Because most of the time those things develop by accident. But if you are really deliberate about this, you will get your results a little faster than some other guy, okay? There, there are obviously some other factors that there are into play, but knowing these things will help you. So let's get into it. Your right hand probably has strengths and weaknesses. My strength is downstrokes, probably most of you guys' strength is downstrokes as well. Okay? My weakness is the upstroke motion. I cannot... It feels weird to me. So here's the first piece of information I want to give you. And you probably know this, but you have to apply this every day in order to grow. So here's the thing. This is your upstroke motion. And this is your downstroke motion. When those two are not synced in level, you cannot reach consistent Elton picking. This is crucial. We can see this with a little chunk. For example, if we take this Paul Gilbert or oh, John Petrucci exercise. Okay, 
if we start with the downstroke, and most of you guys can do this reliably, without hesitating, without making a mistake, very fast. If I try to engage this with an upstroke, however, okay, worse now because I'm warmed up, but it still feels not natural, not as natural as the downstroke motion. So even that out, take some time and work on this. Start with an upstroke and make your chunk, make your speed burst. And additionally, you can engage in a loop. Starting with the downstroke here, it's very helpful and you get this outside picking motion, you get used to the outside picking motion between the E string and the A string, picking outside both strings. Or you can start with an upstroke and make a loop out of this. And as you can see, this is not very consistent in my playing because I didn't practice that as much as the outward picking motion. So I'm working on this. I want to even this out. And as I do this, I realize that my picking is much more consistent. So f I'm, I'm really focusing on this. I, I, I'm obsessed with becoming good at inside picking. Here's the next piece of advice. And this is something I'm implementing now for two or three weeks. And I call it the PCS formula. So what is the PCS formula? It's basically three picking techniques, or not picking techniques, but practice techniques for alternate picking combined. P stands for planting, C stands for chunking, and S stands for slanting. Probably some of you guys know those three things. Let me explain them uh, quickly what they are. Planting is placing the pick as fast as you can to the next picking position. That means if we do an emotion like this, down, up, down, up, down, up, it's placing the pick as fast as you can in the next position. That's all it is, that's planting. So this is what the exercise looks like when I plant it. Now comes chunking. Chunking is basically just turning the whole ex or putting the whole exercise and making little bits out of it. And the reason for this is our, uh, our brain cannot focus on every single note when you play very, very fast. So you basically create some access points of orientation by focusing on them and then letting the rest of the notes come like a reaction from this chunk, from this engagement, from this, uh, from this stressed note. Here's what I mean. This could be a chunk. Okay, you focus just on the downstroke. And the other two notes are more like a reaction to it. You just think about this one note. And the rest just flows naturally. This is chunking. With chunking, this exercise would uh, sound like this. So I'm focusing on the quarter notes. And the rest comes naturally without focus on those notes. And the last piece of the PCS formula is slanting. And this is something most of you guys might not really be familiar with, but, but it's becoming more popular. It's turning the pick in an angle that the stroke motion makes the pick rise above the strings so it's ready to change from one string position to the next string position without touching any string. Okay. Um, this would uh, look like this. I start this way. So the upstroke, uh, so the downstroke makes the pick rise above the strings. Then I change the position. So the upstroke makes the pick rise above the strings. I screwed words up here, but you got you guys see what I mean. So 
So I go through this whole exercise with slanting every string. And if you do this for some time, the slanting will feel very natural and you barely will see it because it will be very subtle. Practice every technique for itself, isolated at first, so you get used to it. Then you can combine those techniques. For example, you do planting and slanting in one exercise, or you do uh, chunking and planting in one exercise. No slanting here. Then you can combine um, chunking and slanting. Example, um, chunking and slanting. I said chunking and slanting. <laughs> no planting here. And so on. And then finally, you combine all three elements and you end up with this. Chunk, chunk, and slanting and planting. And that feels really weird at first. But the more you do it, the more connection you'll get to the instrument. And you will feel that you are the master of the strings. Okay, I promise you. Do this consistently and you, you'll gain some superpowers. But sometimes, you have off days, you have days where it feels really bad and, and you think, well, what is the point of this? The thing is that you have to be really, really consistent with it, okay? The weeks where I'm really, really, really into this and I'm obsessed with getting better, I see tremendous improvement, tremendous improvement. This is something we all want, okay? So stick around with this stuff. And then you can go ahead, take a metronome, start at 70 BPM, and try to do it as fast as you can with this PCS formula. And the PCS formula will get en ingrained naturally into your right hand. And you will notice that you train your hand to do the optimal movement for string crosses. Because ultimately, this is what it comes down to. It's the problem of crossing strings. So let me know in the comments below, what are your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to alternate picking? Where do you have the most problems with? Put it down in the comments, comments below so we can work on this together. Because the point of all this is uh, sharing information with each other. I'm not saying that I'm a master of this stuff, or by no means. But the idea is to share my progress with you and see what other people think about this, how other people feel, how other people are motivated, how are, maybe some of you you guys are frustrated or discouraged because you just don't see the progress. And that's why I made this channel, so we can share our information and share our, our things and um, be a community that uh, becomes uh, strong alternate pickers. Uh, because we love alternate picking. Alternate picking is cool. It's, it's not everything, but it's, it's something that I want to focus on. Uh, by the way, there's a great video by Tom Quayle about practicing. I put the link of the video into the description. It's very, very interesting where he talks about practice and that it's very, very important or at least helped him um, to focus on one particular thing for an extended period of time to get really into it and to dive deep into the topic. Because the more you dive into a particular thing, you'll notice that there are fine nuances and fine techniques and things you never considered to be there. And you'll notice, oh, I, I actually don't know that much about that stuff. It happens all the time. It happens when I practice um, a lot. I have the feeling the more I practice, the less I think I know. There's the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's, it's very natural. I hope this video helps. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to support my channel and my work. Um, and I see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.